Starlink Report. This is the Starlink Report. The Starlink Report for March 15th, 2021. I'm Huey Poplock. The Falcon 9 booster rocket took off from Florida's Cape Canaveral Space Force Station on March 11th, 2021 at 3.13 a.m. Eastern Time. Less than nine minutes later, the rocket's reusable 15-story first stage booster touched back down on the floating Just Read the Instructions drone ship. Three days later, Starlink V1L21, or Starlink 21, launched on March 14th. It set no less than three more records on top of the Falcon 9's latest envelope expansion. Aside from the increasingly familiar primary purpose of deploying another batch of 60 operational version 1.0 Starlink satellites, which Falcon 9's first stage managed without issue, Starlink 21 marked the fastest payload fairing reuse by a huge margin. While slightly less spectacular, Starlink 21 also set the record for the shortest time between two SpaceX launches on the same coast, a little over three days, and broke Launch Complex 39A's pad turnaround record by more than two days. A step further, SpaceX has already scheduled its next launch, Starlink 22, no earlier than March 21st, meaning that the company's other Florida launch pad, LC-40, is also on track to support two launches in less than 10 days. A recently retired executive and one of SpaceX's most senior employees revealed his opinion that there are no obvious showstoppers preventing the company from flying boosters like Falcon 9 B-1051 significantly more than 10 times before any major rework or part replacements are required. SpaceX is certainly doing its best to make up for the two launches in February. Starlink 21 was the third Falcon 9 launch in less than 10 days. Starlink 22 was already scheduled for March 21st, which would equal four SpaceX launches in 16 days. On March 10th, 2021, Starlink, or SpaceX, confirmed that their new constellation of low Earth orbit or LEO-based ultra-fast broadband satellites is now available in parts of Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, and Northern England, which is in addition to existing service areas across Southern England. SpaceX is seeking regulatory approval to connect its rapidly growing network of internet beaming sat Starlink satellites to cars, trucks, shipping boats, and aircraft. The request filed last Friday with the Federal Communications Commission marks SpaceX's biggest step yet towards connecting Starlink to the automotive sector a potentially lucrative line of business that would expand the company's current stationary offerings from rural homes. The March 5th FCC filing asked for a blanket license authorizing operation of Starlink terminals on so-called Earth stations in motion, an umbrella term for cars, trucks, maritime vessels, and aircraft. No longer are users willing to forego connectivity while on the move, whether driving a truck across the country, moving a freighter from Europe to a U.S. port, or while a domestic or international flight, the filing read. Smaller passenger vehicles may have to wait. Not connecting Tesla cars to Starlink as our terminal is much too big. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk tweeted on Monday, responding to an article on the FCC filing. This is for aircraft, ships, large trucks, and RVs. SpaceX's request to link Starlink with vehicles didn't give any details on any new antenna designs, but it said they are, electronic, they are electrically identical to its previously authorized consumer user terminals, but have mountings that allow them to be installed on vehicles, vessels, and aircrafts. 
The mobile antennas would fit on the mast of ships or in the tops of semi-trucks, or, in consumer cases, on passenger cars or pleasure boats, another SpaceX filing said. Unlike Starlink's current terminals, which come with mounts and are installed by the customer, the vehicle antennas will be set up by qualified installers. The next scheduled Starlink liftoff, as I said, is March 21st. And this has been the Starlink Report.